the Nigerian Sovereign Investment Authority has released its 2021 full year earnings performance. Investment interest income grew by double digits to 10.2 billion, according to the report. Net assets grew 19.02% to 919.73 billion. The special uh, investment vehicle also reported a profit after tax of 153.56 billion, marking the ninth year of the NSIA's profitability. Joining me now to discuss these numbers and the business plan, as well as the outlook uh, for the 2022 year, is Uche Oji, the Chief Executive Officer of the NSIA. Uh, good, uh, good morning to you, sir. Thanks for coming through, and we appreciate uh, making this presentation and this interview with us here on uh, Arise News and Global Business Report. So, uh, let's get started. We, the... The NSI recorded you posted double digits growth in investment income, but uh, single digit declines in other line items. Uh, walk me through the 2021 financial year with the key financial uh, ratio, financial items. Right. Well, thank you very much. Um, I think you have the numbers on the screen. I think the real um, factor uh, between the net income, the gross investment income, and um, uh, uh, which you referred to, uh, is the following. One is net interest income and 10.2 billion naira is just literally uh, some of the interest that we earn from the investments that we make. But the real core drivers of NSIA's earnings come from the bulk of the investments we make in public markets and capital markets. Um, and the difference between what you saw, the uh, what I would like to call the net um, uh, 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 income, excluding exchange rates, um, which is saw the slight decline from 113 billion naira last year to 109 billion naira this year, and that cascades through the uh, reports. So there are probably two things that I think stand out. One is we made less foreign exchange gain um, in 2021 than we made in 2020. Um, and, uh, but apart from that, the rest of the other core uh, income themselves were slightly lower too, uh, but it wasn't bad. I mean, I think we're talking about going from 113 billion naira to a 109 billion naira in terms of if you take out the impact of the exchange rate. And if you remember last time when we had this show, when we announced 2020 results, I did tell you that 2021 will not be as good as 2020 was. 2020 for us was a, uh, a blockbuster year. It was a very good year because the markets uh, worked in our favor. We saw some risk coming into the market and we began to take some risk off our books already before the end of the year. So that's what led to the slight decline. So, um, it is in line with the guidance we gave, quite frankly, better than I expected it to be uh, because we started to take some risk off already um, at the, uh, so sometime towards the later part of 2021 um, as we anticipate what will be a very tough period for the markets going forward. So we're very happy, very satisfied with it. It is 90 year of profitability for the NSIA. Um, you know, the single line item we picked up, which is really the smaller part of our revenue drivers, was up. But across the board, I think... Um, uh, we earned some solid profit, which led to the growth in assets, uh, gross assets uh, from 900 plus to 1.2 trillion, net assets now from 772 to 920 billion uh, naira. So all of that, in our opinion, is actually all very solid for 2021. Uh, okay, okay, thank you for that uh, summary. But, but how did you grow uh, the Future Generations Fund, the Stabilization Fund, and Infrastructure Fund, those three pillars in your, on your books? What were the triggers for those uh, uh, growth last year? Sure. Sure. The Future Generations Fund uh, did quite well. I think uh, in, terms, in dollar terms, I think it was about 13% uh, in terms of dollar returns and in Naira returns um, higher because of the impact of exchange rates. Uh, there were three or four key drivers and one detractor, one major detractor. Uh, the key driver were that we continue to allocate capital to the broader developed markets, which did well last year. Uh, the Europe, United States, uh, all in all, did well in 2021. Um, and also um, the key um, impact for us, we continue to allocate capital to venture capital. If you notice that we did that uh, starting in 2020, uh, that also you know, turned out decent return in 2021 for us, um, and as well as our alternative investments. We do have a lot of type of lease type income. So everything from aircraft leasing, we started to do better, uh, healthcare royalties, all of these things did well for us in 2021. The major challenge in 2021 for us was uh, emerging markets, particularly China, where we saw a complete, um, uh, we, we saw significant declines, uh, especially in Chinese technology companies. 
if you remember, the Chinese government have actually started to rein in a lot of these technology companies uh, in their domain, and that, that in so many ways was a major detractor for us. So we struggle with emerging market equities, particularly emerging market technology, uh, because of the actions taken uh, in terms of trying to rein in some of these companies. And so that was a big detractor for us. So that's Future Generations Fund. Mm. Uh, uh, the uh, Stabilization Fund, which you're aware of, is basically just that. I mean, that fund is short-term liquid. It's only mostly in treasury bills, um, U.S. Treasury, and high-grade investment uh, uh, fixed income products. That, that I don't think is something that we emphasize too much about because that we just try to preserve capital. If you remember, the essence of the stabilization fund is to provide cash to government in times of economic stress and that we have committed to doing within seven days. So think about that as something that kind of holds its value. Uh, I think that grew about just a couple of percentage points and so not really by much, but that is really well within how we should grow, like mm -hmm. keep it value at or above uh, US uh, uh, CPI. Um, now, infrastructure fund. Infrastructure fund was very busy for us last year in healthcare, in agriculture, in toll roads, in power, in financial markets, infrastructure, in technology. Uh, if you remember last year, we talked about our new tech uh, uh, fund that we're, we're driving. So quite a lot of activities last year. Uh, all in all, returns were positive, but we are now in an aggressive phase of investing uh, on the infrastructure side. And as you know, infrastructure takes its time before it starts to yield some serious returns. So we're very, very pr proud of some of the things we accomplished, especially the impact that we've made mm. with the infrastructure fund. I'm sure uh, if you talk to average Nigerian on the streets, uh, they're going to ask you more about infrastructure. So I'm going to ask you uh, to break it down a bit more into those yes. infrastructure um, that NSI uh, involved in over the in recent years and how it all played into 2021. You're doing a whole lot on infrastructure around healthcare. You're doing around the fertilizer in, in food. You're doing also a, a few of other areas. Well, give me about a minute of these uh, a few um, uh, what you call baskets of, of your infrastructure funding investment initiative at NSI. Sure. Uh, I think let me pick on the ones you mentioned. Fertilizer, I mean, I think that's a program we run for the government. Last year was the first year of the major restructuring of that program. Um, we've now spun that vehicle out of NSIA into the Ministry of Finance Incorporated. Uh, we made it a bit more commercial. We made it that the fertilizer blending companies themselves actually now put up more of the capital. And so we reduce our capital commitment. And that has had a, f a very strong positive impact. Last year was the first year that that program turned a profit. Now, this is an area that has been um, driven by subsidy. And there was no need for subsidy last year, right? So we made, I think, about 10 billion naira profit, um, which may not sound like a lot, but it is the f if you think about the fact that every single year, uh, in the years even before the NSA got involved, were actually subsidy, uh, uh, subsidized by government. First time that we thought that happened. Secondly, we saw the number of blending plants. We started with seven to 11, and now we are 51 blending plants at the end of last year. In fact, as we speak today now, I think the number of blending plants are somewhere close to 72. So big investments have come in by the private sector. And with that, the NSI is beginning to remove its support for that industry. I think this has been for us uh, a remarkable uh, achievement in terms of turning around the fertilizer industry. Healthcare, um, our first three investments in healthcare have actually turned out to be fairly uh, stable. They are now generating cash, uh, self-sustaining, uh, which, is, which is one of the things we wanted to be able to accomplish. And we're now about to expand aggressively. We've announced a program to build 23 new centers across the country. Um, and this includes a center for advanced medicine here in Abuja, a lot of diagnostic centers, some oncology centers, some cat labs, some renal centers. These are all things that are now in our program. We have managed to learn to see how to make diagnostics work and become profitable, oncology center run and become profitable. And I think, you know, we can talk about profitability, but let's talk about impact as well. Um, you know, I was very pleased with how uh, busy our team were in the oncology center. Uh, in 2021, um, uh, end of 2020 and 2021 combined, uh, they have had over 150,000 uh, sessions of both chemo and radio treatments for people who could not go abroad for medical treatment because of COVID restrictions. So this is something that we're very, very proud of in terms of this impact. And we're now looking to expand this now across the entire uh, country with all the investments we're making into entering new centers. Roads, I mean, I think roads, we manage this fund called the Presidential Infrastructure Development Fund. And that was, is a fund that's handling Second Niger Bridge, Lagos Ibadan Expressway, Abuja Kaduna, uh, Zaria Kano Road. 
Um, you, that I don't need to tell you. I think people have seen a lot of coverage of the success we've had in those areas. Not yet done. We're still, you know, a few ways from completion. But second, Niger Bridge has been the most advanced. I think I can say end of this year, um, uh, we'll comfortably uh, maybe early next year even. But I, I think right now, end of this year is a realistic target to set for when I think uh, this will be commissioned. Um, Lagos about an expressway, a lot of work still to be done, but we've gone quite far. I mean, I drive the road every once in a while to check on the uh, progress, and that, that I think is something people can attest. Uh, we've seen some significant progress. So there's work being done there. Um, and the tech, of course, we've made our first investment now in a uh, data center company that hopefully becomes the basis for us to start to invest in hyperscale data centers, something that's really necessary for the country. And we're working on submarine cable systems, working on all sorts of things in tech. Um, as well as, you know, soon to be launched our innovation fund, innovation prize. So these are all things that uh, the NSI has been very, very busy with um, mm. in terms of uh, infrastructure. But obviously uh, not enough in the context of the broad needs of the country. I agree with you. Uh, but why we need have to do a whole lot of things, uh, according to the EFDB president, and as you already know, and many people are aware, there's a food crisis imminent on the African continent. And fertilizer is becoming a very big Correct. issue with the Russia-Ukraine crisis. So it looks like we were just sniffing this problem in the air. So NSI has $200 million agriculture fund. The uh, AFDB is, is just approved $1.5 billion on Friday to support farming uh, agriculture fertilizer across Africa. Uh, talk to me about this. Yes. Well, two things. First of all, the fund we launched was predated the whole crisis. Uh, let's talk about this crisis on, on food. It's a big problem. Uh, the Bank of England governor recently described the coming crisis that it could be of apocalyptic proportions. Now, that is something that I think is a very serious statement that people should pay attention to. We've seen three things happen. One, we've seen the price of all the raw materials skyrocket. Uh, in some cases, three times, four times, five times what they were the year before. These are the raw materials used to make fertilizers. Um, and that's the problem. Luckily for us at the NSIA, and with the reform of the program, we were able to actually um, overproduce in 2021. So coming into 2020, we had sufficient material to cover about 40% of our needs. But it is, you know, we still have some needs to cover. And so to achieve that, uh, we went on to now start trying to find the one crucial raw material that the Russia-Ukraine crisis was going to affect, and that was potash. Um, it's difficult to find potash, but I'm glad to report that we've managed to solve that problem. We have, as we speak now, three vessels of potash selling into the country, and that more than you know, fixes our needs for the rest of 2022. That brings me to the final issue, which is pricing. Price is a problem. The raw materials have gone up a lot, and this is not just in Nigeria, it's a global problem. Uh, I mean, we're hearing reports in England of farmers, you know, saying that they can, can afford it. Um, and I think, you know, this is where there's the uh, imperative for fiscal uh, uh, support to ensure that this gets through to our farmers. But, you know, if you dimension the problem into twofold, availability and pricing, we have solved the availability problem. Uh, we have all our vessels of phosphate now in country, warehouses are full, potash is on its way in. I think we get the first vessel in about 10 this time. So we're all feeling very, very positive. And we already have 40% of our needs already in the warehouses at the end of the year. So I think, you know, if we can, the issue of availability is taken care of. Pricing is where I think, you know, support might be needed because it's not just NSIA, it's a global problem. Okay, uh, just to sum it up, this conversation, thank you so much, uh, uh, Uche Oji, the NSIA CEO. On the corporate governance side, the uh, third uh, NSIA board was inaugurated late last year. How much uh, discussions are you guys having as to what the outlook is for the new board in the new year, which will be their first full year, which is 2022? Sure. Correct. Uh, it, it, it's, uh, first of all, it's been very active with the, with the board. Uh, it's really quite refreshing frankly, uh, coming in, setting new goals, new targets, one of which, of course, for the board was a infrastructure. But more importantly, I think the global market is flying into turbulent territory. Uh, and so part of the challenge is also ensuring that we manage our uh, expectations and manage our portfolio uh, in a manner that allows us or helps us skirt around the challenges that we see. We see four big issues. And we discussed this issue, was, and if you remember last time I was here, the first is global inflation. Inflation is the single biggest challenge the world is facing today. Last year, in your, in your show, I said you could not pump this much money uh, by the Federal Reserve, by the ECB, by the Bank of Japan. Everybody is pumping money into the system without creating inflation. 
And for a while, we're told, oh, it's transitory. We said it wasn't transitory. And here we are. Inflation is the single biggest problem, and it's going to affect many things. It's going to affect emerging market debt. It's going to affect technology companies. It's going to affect the entire capital market, frankly. So I think 2022 will be the toughest year in the last 10 years, in the last 15 years uh, for investors. And it is a global crisis. The second challenge, of course, is the Russia-Ukraine conflict. Uh, as that has now begun to trigger a food crisis from wheat to fertilizer across the world, navigating that is going to be a major challenge, not just for the NSI, but for global funds and for the country. Uh, the third, obviously, is ensuring that um, we continue to manage the impact on this across other indices like currencies. Uh, and, and so it is a very active period. Uh, navigating this is very important. But I think it's important that I warn you right now, it is very unlikely 2022 will be a very difficult year for most investors. And over time, as the year goes through and progresses and we'll see what the returns are, I'll update you. Uh, but I think this is a year that people should actually realize that one of it's the one in a 10 year, one in a 15 year mm. correction that happens in the market, it started already. And I think um, for the NSI board, uh, I think there's a lot of focus on risk management and navigating this. I Thank think we're so in a good much. place at the NSIA, roughly relative to other people. Mm. But I think this is uh, it's a challenge that we're going to face. Thank you so much, uh, Uchina Oji, the CEO at the Nigeria Sovereign Investment Authority. Thank you for uh, raising the curtain on your latest uh, earnings for 2021 here on Arise News Channel.